Okay, let's head into the temple here. Restroom Tobias, tell us a story. Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. And you know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides, too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance, and about Stark, and Arcadia, and... This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening in... In my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... Couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth... Perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the balance, as observed by the Sentinel, the order of the balance, the fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago, so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the balance, and it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the earth was one and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. 
we were given a visitation then. The drag kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drag kin, dragon, dragons, whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the order of the balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark. Magic and science. Chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted 13. Six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between. The drag kin, our mentor, our custodian our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks. To split a world in two. To create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes. And so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them. A disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one. A conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the thirteen came to the tower and with them a woman whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared. And in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower, the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the balance and of the guardian. And it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disk and said, this disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued. Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disc is broken but nor can it be repaired without the disc being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. <laughs> 